welcome to Petrol Ped. Now, what could be better than driving a 715 horsepower, 900 newton meter Aston Martin DBS Superleggera? <laughs> well, driving one with the roof down, of course. Welcome to the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera Volante. I have a spare pair of pants with me, but I think we head back to the barn and I'll tell you all about this incredible car. Now my story with the DBS Superleggera started way back at its launch, which unbelievably was June 2018. It seems like yesterday. And I remember seeing the car being unveiled in London and just thinking it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. I've always been a fan of Aston Martins, that is no secret. But for me, this car just had that amazingly difficult balance of very brutish, rugged looks and absolute beauty and simplicity and elegance. And I, and I think it pulls it off really, really well. The coupe, what's to be said? Over 700 horsepower, 900 Newton meters of torque, truly epic performance, which I found out when I then drove it on a runway at VMAX 200 and got up to 193 miles an hour, still the fastest I've ever driven a car. It was so easy to do. That's good. Oh, wow. <laughs> what did you, you get to? 193. There you go, that's good. And then finally I got to drive it on the road, again thanks to Aston Martin Chichester who have been super kind to me today and let me have this car for the whole day on yeah. my own to be able to share it with you. Yeah. So when you take a car like that and then you chop the roof off, I know straight away people are going to say, well that will spoil it, you will make it less stiff, uh, you will mean it needs to be heavier, and that is true. It even drops as you're driving along. So this car has had the roof chopped off. It's a canvas roof, um, and that means you need to add some stiffening. So this car does weigh 100 kilos more than the coupe, and it does lose out on a bit of torsional rigidity. Apparently it's about half as stiff as the coupe, which was massively stiff. So this is still a stiff car. And luckily today, although I don't have a huge amount of good weather because there's a big storm front coming in, I have reasonably good weather, it is sunny, and I am going to be driving this car with the roof down. So let's just have a look at a couple of the standout features that make this car different to the standard DBS Superleggera. And we'll start off at the front. Now the good news is there are no changes to the front. And that's good because I think the front of this car is awesome so pretty much this whole front end of the car no difference whatsoever i know for some that grille is way way too big for me i just think it looks awesome um, it's now no longer the largest grille in the aston martin lineup that has now been taken by the new dbx suv front end then no changes whatsoever there's a lot of air needs to go into there to feed the angry beast that sits under the bonnet the side profile at first glance looks the same, but there is something very interesting we need to talk about. Now I am a huge fan of how Aston Martin manage airflow around their cars. I find the whole subject fascinating. And the technique we see here on DBS was first seen in the DB11. This huge big kind of vent out of the side wing has a couple of jobs. Primary role is to vent high pressure air buildup that builds up in the front wheel arch at high speed. And the idea is that the pressure escapes through here and in the coupe it then has a second job. In the coupe what happens is these vents create basically a vortex that runs down the side of the car and feeds the air into a vent in the C pillar that then comes out of the boot lid and produces downforce. 
th this car doesn't have a C pillar, so that secondary purpose, that airflow, disappears. So you'll find that this car doesn't quite have the same downforce created at the back that you would find in the coupe, but you still get that super aggressive front end. I like that very much. And then the final thing I want to talk about on the outside of the car is boot space. Come this way. Well, I want to talk about boot space, or more accurately, lack of boot space. Because <laughs> it really isn't very big in here at all. Now, you have got, because the roof is currently up, I've got this kind of partition that can push up and give you a little bit more space, but you compromise the boot a huge amount in this car because of the soft top mechanism. And if you think when the roof's down, that's the boot you've got. So you could get a couple of soft bags in there for a weekend away, but you ain't gonna be getting any golf clubs in there, that's for sure. And then this bag here is actually the wind deflector that can go behind the driver's seats. <laughs> oh. One of the great pleasures in life is getting into an Aston Martin cabin. They're just beautiful in here. Now I'm not gonna do a great deal on the interior in here because I've done a review of this car already. I may well just <laughs> just awesome the most important button in here is this one so the ability to drop the roof and you can do this while you're going along as well for me makes this car right up my street it is the most beautiful sounding car not bad for a turbocharged v12 but you know, a naturally aspirated V12 is a thing of great beauty. This thing does a pretty good job of sounding amazing. And if I just put it into the Sport Plus mode, because that's when you get the full auditory pleasure and... <laughs> so, uh, it's a nice day at the moment. It's not raining at the moment. The roads are a little bit damp, so I think we need to tread carefully, but I think we go for a bit of a drive and have a chat about this car. And then one of the things I've always wanted to do in a soft top V12 Aston Martin is find a really big tunnel. I'm going to do my best to keep the roof down as much as I can on this review because that's the whole point of this car but it's just started to rain which in a car with this much power isn't a good thing so let's just run down a few of the driving controls and some of the things available to me um, I've got a ZF Auto gearbox but I can go to the paddles and I always whenever I've driven this car or any Aston Martin for that matter always driven it on the manual paddles rather than driving it through the gearbox I've got two buttons on the steering wheel. One changes the suspension setup, and the other one, the throttle mapping and the engine management and so on. And currently I've got that one in GT mode. So that would be the mode you would use for the kind of cruising and just mooching about. One click of that button puts me into sport mode, slightly different display in front of me, and a little bit more of a throttle noise and a little bit more um, it's a slightly different throttle mapping. However, the whole point of this car is auditory pleasure, and all of that auditory pleasure comes when you click that little button once more and you put it into Sport Plus mode. Firstly, we get a far, far better tone out the back, lots of burbles and crackles on overrun. However, one of the things that I do need to have a conversation with you about today is it is cold. It's only eight and a half degrees. I have my heated seats on and the heating up full whack. And it's very damp. And believe me, very damp in a car like this translates to drive it carefully. So 900 Newton meters of torque. This gearbox is actually torque limited to just deliver 600 Newton meters in first, second and third because otherwise I'm just going to sit there all day with the back wheel spinning round. Already I've had a couple of kind of just loose moments at the back and loose moments in my pants because this car aspect is over a quarter of a million quid and believe me I want to take it back to Harwood's shiny side up. You just have 
to be very, very careful on the throttle. Just bleed the power in gently. And I know some of you might be sitting there going, go on, Greavesy, give in the beans, get the back end now. Simple answer that is, no, I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> I'm on my very best behaviour. The ride comfort and quality with the suspension just in the softest setting is exquisite. This isn't the best of roads, but it's just so... It's compliant but not squishy, and I like that a lot. The steering is quite firm. You've got this kind of odd-shaped, almost square steering wheel. I've mentioned this in DBS videos before. The best thing about that is when you've got your hands like I have currently, your hands drop perfectly onto the paddles and onto the indicator stalks, and it just gives you that connection with the car. I like that very, very much. But it's just that V12 in front. <laughs> It just has the most raucous soundtrack. I mean, you are, you are gonna get an ASBO. Oh, in the days of OPF filters and all of the emotion being taken out of the soundtrack of a car, Aston Martin had done wonders with this, because it really does sound brilliant. I must admit though, um, I always am quite intimidated when I drive expensive cars in wet and cold conditions. So there must be something about, oh! oh, oh, oh. Must be something about me when I book a car, although hopefully we can, we can uh, get most of this filming done before the really grotty weather turns up. Oh, 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 oh. Now, one of the things about this car, it is a relatively wide car. It does have quite a big wide feel to it. So when you're driving it through little villages like this, you do have to be a bit careful. It has the most outrageous wheels on it. The rears are 305 wide. I mean, that on a cold day like today, believe me, it's a very wide tire with a huge amount of, uh, a huge amount of power and twisting force going through it. But when you, it just, oh dear. Yeah, uh, I'd just buy this car and drive quietly at 30 miles an hour through built up villages and towns. It sounds fantastic. But it's when you get to an open bit of road and you, you get the opportunity to give it a proper bit of Yahoo, then that's when you have to really, really be on your game and be very careful because it does sound lovely. Day like today, it's really important just to feather the power in gently because otherwise, things are going to go wrong in a spectacular way. Honestly, don't think I've used more than about a third of throttle yet. It's so slippery, it's unbelievable. Even with all the traction control on, you just have to be very, very careful. So I've come down onto the dual carriageway. Two reasons. One, I wanted to see what the noise was like with the roof down at cruising speed. So I'm now currently doing 60 miles an hour, and it's not too bad. If I get any wind flutter on the mic, my apologies for that, but I just had to have the roof down. But the second reason is, just a little bit along here, is a very, very long and very cool tunnel. And it's a 70 mile an hour limit through that tunnel. So it should be good for some auditory pleasure. Now there are measured uh, mile speed cameras through this tunnel, so all of what you're about to hear and see is all done within the legal speed limit. Now I'm currently in eighth gear. So as I come into the tunnel, I get down a few cogs.
Sadly, this road's a little bit busy today as well, but... It's when you're driving this car through a road that has tree canopy. Oh, there we go. I wasn't leaning on that at all. And it was a bit slippy at the back. I don't think removing the roof compromises the driving qualities of this car really. In fact, for me, it enhances them because you get that auditory pleasure and that connection with your environment. What it does compromise massively is luggage space. The boot space in this really, now that you've got to make room for that soft top mechanism, is massively compromised to the point where, you know, it really probably compromises how, well, how, certainly how far and how long you could go away for in this car. Is that going to be a problem to the average owner? Probably not. But what an experience. I have to say a massive, massive thank you to Thomas and all the guys at Aston Martin Chichester. They invited me to drive the car just before Christmas actually, but I wasn't able to because of other commitments. So to be able to rearrange it for today and to get a day where, although it's been very cold and very greasy and quite scary, I have had to or been able to get the roof down for the whole drive but this car is about the driving pleasure it gives you a v12 a soft top what more in life is there anyway i hope you enjoyed this video guys if you have done so please give me a thumbs up comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to petroped for plenty more content to come and I'll see you on the next film, guys, but I've got this car for a couple more hours and I intend to enjoy every single minute of it. See you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe.